my name is Kristen. This is Christian Craves Books, and I'm so excited to share with you all of the February releases I have my eye on. So the first release day of February is the 7th, and I'm going to start with a sequel to a book I haven't read yet, but I hope this motivates me to finally pick it up because I've had the first book since the day it came out. I went to the store and bought it the day it came out, and I haven't read it. So this is Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones, and this is the sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw. And I know that this is a book that gets a lot of mixed reviews. It is like a slasher horror book, but I love Stephen Graham Jones. I do think it takes a second to get used to his writing, so I think it's important to know that going in. I will say that I started to read the synopsis of Don't Fear the Reaper, and I felt like it was spoiling things for the first book, so don't do that. If you haven't read the first book, don't look at the synopsis for the second. Honestly, I don't know much about the first book because people talk about it, but it doesn't really sink into me what it's about. I just know it's a slasher, and I love that author. So just wanted to put that one on your radar in case you read it and love the first one. And then I have a sequel to a book that I have read, and this is Not Your Ex's Hexes by April Asher. This is the sequel to Not the Witch You Wed, and these are just fun books. They are romances with like a paranormal element to them, and they seem to be all companion novels. So in the first book, we are following a magicless witch and a werewolf and their romance, and you really get a lot of the politics in the world, which I thought was interesting. And then this, in the sequel, it's a one night stand between a willful witch and a broody half demon conjures an adventure that wouldn't be complete without several magical mishaps. So it's just, these books are just fun. They're silly, ridiculous, not to be taken too seriously, but a really good time. So I'm excited about that one. This next one is one that was actually my most anticipated YA book releases of the year. And this is Seven Faceless Saints by M.K. Lobb. And this is set in a world where saints and their disciples rule and you cannot go against them. And we're following a main character whose father is killed by the military and is, she is seeking revenge. Even if that means she has to get back in the good graces of an ex and infiltrate the government and society a little bit. And then we also get the perspective of her ex who I believe is part of the military but he's becoming disillusioned to the whole thing. And then people start getting murdered around them and the government doesn't care until one of the disciples is killed and these two characters band together to figure out what happens and it just sounds incredible. Moving on to February 14th which is obviously Valentine's Day but I thought we'd have more romance releases on this day but none that I could really find or was very interested in. I think I have maybe one or two coming out that day but we're starting with a witchy book and this is Venko by Sherry Damelin and this is actually set in Toronto but it's by a Canadian author and Venko is like a swap of coven and so this is a witchy story as I said and I just love anything witchy and this is following a woman named Lucky who's getting evicted from her apartment and she ends up hearing a whisper or a voice in the walls and she finds this spoon with like a witch's face carved into it and she's always known that there was magic in her family and then somebody in Salem is looking for her and for everybody who has these spoons I think there are seven spoons that when they come together creates like a new generation of magic a revolution and they are on the hunt for this final spoon and there's a witch hunter involved as well so I think this could be really really good then we have The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chashki and I know so many of us are excited for this I already have my copy from Fairy Loot I'm buddy reading it in February so I know I will be getting to this one and I hope I love it because I've been wanting to read from this author for such a long time and I know people adore her YA series and it is something that is on my TBR and I hope to get to eventually but this sounds more my alley because it's gothic and it's adult and I think it's like it's gothic horror which is just so with my wheelhouse that is the kind of horror that I'm drawn to it's actually a pretty short book so that is kind of exciting as well and I'm just going to read you the first paragraph because I think it does a good job of enticing you to pick this up. It says, Once upon a time, a man who believed in fairy tales married a beautiful, mysterious woman named Indigo Maxwell Castaneda. He was a scholar of myths. She was an heiress to a fortune. They exchanged gifts and stories and believed they would live happily ever after. And in exchange for her love, Indigo extracted a promise that her bridegroom would never pry into her past. But when Indigo learns that her estranged aunt is dying and the couple is forced to return to her childhood home, the house of dreams, the bridegroom will soon find himself unable to resist. For within the crumbling manor's extravagant rooms and musty halls, there lurks the shadows of another girl, Azure, Indigo's dearest childhood friend who suddenly disappeared. As the house slowly reveals his wife's secrets, the bridegroom will be forced to choose between reality and fantasy. 
even if doing so threatens to destroy their marriage or their lives. So that is super intriguing for sure. Then we actually have a memoir that comes out on February 14th and this cover screams Valentine's Day and I do think that this looks back on the author's love life but I've heard there's a lot of trigger warnings in here and this is Discalcula, of Love Story of Epic Miscalculation by Camon Felix and Camon Felix is a poet and I think that translates into the writing in here and I've heard the writing is fantastic and it's really just a look back on all of her relationships in her childhood and just love in general and how that's led her to where she is today and I think Discalcula is a thing where you just cannot do math. I think that is what it is and she kind of ties that in to her love life as well. I don't know how that's gonna go but I'm intrigued nonetheless and I hope that I can grab that one on audiobook because I'm sure it'll be fantastic. I've said this a few times but I am picky about the YA contemporary that I pick up but Almost Always by Edward Underhill really sounds like something I'm going to like for many reasons. This is set in Wisconsin. It follows a trans boy named Miles who is a pianist and is looking to get to regionals but also win his ex back but then a new boy comes to town and that disrupts all of his plans and I love following characters who are artists and I believe Eric is the boy that he meets and he is a cartoonist so it's a romance between a pianist and a cartoonist and I just love that. I love following characters who express themselves in any kind of art so that are those are just buzzwords for me and the whole setup just sounds sweet. This cover is absolutely adorable and the fact that this comes out on Valentine's Day I do want to try and read it the day it comes out. Maybe I'll blog that experience if I have time. It does sound like the perfect book to read on that day. The last one that comes out on February 14th, I've been seeing this get some buzz already and this cover is very intriguing. It is Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Collar Croft. And this is about an ambitious woman who after a lifetime of conning alongside her mother wants to leave her dark past behind and marry the heir to one of the country's wealthiest families. So I think a lot of us are gonna be intrigued by that. There's something about following a con woman specifically that is so intriguing to me. I don't know what that is about but the fact that she was raised by her mother as a con woman is intriguing. The fact that she's marrying into this wealthy family I'm sure that her past is going to catch up with her. This is like a thriller. This cover is everything and I've seen this all over Instagram already so I have high hopes for that one. Next up of course we have a foodie romance. This comes out on February 21st. This is Best Served Taught by Amanda Elliott and Amanda Elliott is the author of Sadie on a Plate which I talked about last year. I haven't read yet but still very much want to read. But I think Best Served Hot is going to be the one that I prefer just because of the premise. I like reading memoirs from food critics so why not read a romance about them and this follows two food critics with very different ideas who have a romance. Our heroine is big on social media. She has an Instagram account where she reviews restaurants and things like that. She applies for her dream job but she's turned down and the guy who gets the job is somebody she absolutely hates and he's so anti-social media. They have a run-in at a food festival that goes viral and they decide to do some reviews together because it's good for both of their careers. And then I love the final paragraph in the synopsis of this one. It says, over tapas, burgers, and more, Julie and Bennett connect over their shared love of food. But when the competitive fire between them turns extra spicy, they'll have to decide how much heat their relationship can take. So that just sounds like everything I love in a foodie romance. Next up is I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Mackay and you might know that name because she wrote The Great Believers which is another book I've had for ages and haven't read. It's on my TBR cart. I will get to it. I know a lot of people love that one but this one sounds really really interesting and the fact that there seems to be a mystery in this one intrigues me more. It says a successful film professor and podcaster Bodie Kane is content to forget her past. The family tragedy that marred her adolescence her four largely miserable years at the New Hampshire boarding school and the 1995 murder of a classmate. Though the circumstances surrounding that classmate's death and the conviction of the school's athletic trainer are subject to intense fascination online, Bodhi prefers needs to let sleeping dogs lie. So she's a podcaster which I know a lot of us like in our thrillers. She is actually invited back to the school to teach some classes and then things unravel, unravel from there where she's starting to bring up the past and she can't ignore it anymore. So I think that's going to be incredible. Early reviews are fantastic. I think this author is pretty well loved so I'm excited about that. I bet you that'll be great on audio. So so I discovered last year and I should have known this all along but I really like historical fantasy and this one looks perfect for that. This is The Magician's Daughter by H.G. Perry and it is set in 1912 and for the last 70 years magic has all but disappeared from the world yet magic is all Biddy has ever known. So we're following a young girl who was 
orphaned as a baby. I think she was actually in a shipwreck. She ends up on this magical island that not everybody can see and she's raised by this magician who teaches her how to perform magic but tells her she can never leave the island but he disappears from time to time and one day he just never returns and she goes on a mission to what to find out what happened to her guardian and this leads her on a path of discovery. I think this is going to be fantastic. This is like right in my wheelhouse. This is the kind of historical fantasy that just appeals to me. You know I had to include a Greek myth retelling on this list. I never get tired of them. There are tons of them. We're getting a lot this year. I know they're not for everybody anymore, but they still are right up my alley. I'm always excited about them. This one is The Shadow of Perseus by Claire Haywood, who wrote The Daughter of Sparta, Daughters of Sparta. I have not read that yet, but if you have read that and you liked it or didn't like it, I'd love to know all your thoughts on that one. I'm curious. But this one is following three perspectives. One of them is Medusa, who I've read from many times, but you'll never get tired of reading Medusa's story. It's fascinating and I love the different takes on Medusa. But it's also following Andromeda and Danae and their stories, and all centered around Perseus. So as Perseus becomes increasingly obsessed with the promise of his destiny, his heroic journey casts a shadow of violence and destruction across all three women's lives. But even as he tries to silence them, the women may find that reclaiming their voices is their only hope for living themselves into a better future. So this is typical of most Greek myth retellings that I've read and loved where it's giving the female uh, characters in these stories voices and seeing how uh, everything that the men are doing, how that's affecting the women and I always appreciate that. So I'm excited about that one. This next one, I really don't know what to make of it, but this cover got me even though I have no idea what I'm looking at. This is Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Snyder and this is a sci-fi horror novella. It's under 300 pages at least which I find that is my sweet spot with horror. I like them to be under 300 pages. Just pack it all in as few pages as you can because I really think that that builds up the tension for me. And this says, to survive they must evolve. A virus tears across the globe transforming its victims into nightmarish ways. As the world collapses, dark forces pull a small group of women together. So we're following three women. Erin, who was once quiet and closeted, acquires an appetite for a woman in her brain. Why does forbidden fruit taste so good? So that is creepy. Savannah, a professional BDSM switch, discovers a new turn on, committing brutal murders to her eldritch masters. And Mariva, plagued with chronic tumors, is too horrified to acknowledge her divine role in the coming apocalypse. And as her growth multiplies, so does her desperation. So this sounds like it's going to be out there, but I'm intrigued by it for sure. Moving on to the last release day of the month. It is February 28th. There are a lot of books coming out on this date. So we'll start with Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sambury, who wrote um, Blood Lake Magic, which I haven't read, but I know a lot of people love. And this is more my speed because it is horror gothic haunted house that is just what I love and it is set in two timelines which I also appreciate so we're following Daisy who can see dead people and she lives in Toronto so obviously she is surrounded by death there in such a big city so her and her mother spend the summers in northern Ontario where I live and she thinks she's gonna be able to escape from all of these ghosts but the house is nothing like she thought it would be there's some supernatural things happen there and we don't really know what happens but then a decade later we're following a different character named Brittany, whose mother is abusive and talks about this miracle house all the time. And she has a web series called Haunted, but it's all lies. Brittany knows everything that her mother is talking about is a facade, is not true. And she wants to expose her mother for who she truly is and reveal what really happened 10 years earlier. Then we have a romance that I've been really excited about because the cover just screams perfect for book lovers. This is The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest who has written a lot of YA contemporary romance that I've seen around and I believe that this is her adult debut which is exciting and as you can see from the cover they are passing books back and forth on the balcony so what else do you need to know but I believe our main character she's really shy and is much, very much a reader and she decides to email the author of her favorite book and they exchange emails back and forth eventually he ghosts her then a new neighbor moves in and she realizes and it's actually the author of this book and I think he maybe slowly realizes who she is as well and they have a romance so I just think that this is going to be sweet perfect for all of us book lovers. I believe that the release date for this next one was actually pushed up which rarely happens and is really exciting. This is The Adventures of 
Amina Al Sharafi by Shannon Chakaborty, another author I've been wanting to read from for ages. I know people love the City of Brass series, the David Bod trilogy. That has been on my radar for years. I do want to get to it, but this is her adult debut, which is fun. And it says, Amina Al Sharafi should be content. After a storied and scandalous career as one of the Indian Ocean's most notorious pirates, she survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful emergent princes, several husbands, and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of su the supernatural. Then she gets this offer to have one last heist and get the old crew back together, which I always like. I love that trope of like, let's get back together one last time pull up this heist and then I'm sure it's nothing like she expected it to be. But like Pirates, Sound the Sea, I think that this has the potential to be absolutely fantastic. Next up is actually a sequel to a book I haven't read yet, but it's very much on my radar and I know a lot of people love the first book, so I just wanted to mention this in case you didn't realize this was coming out and the covers are just beautiful for this. So this is Immortality, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz and the first book was anatomy and these covers, as I said, are just everything. So I believe that the first book follows this character who is a woman, it's historical, and she wants to be a doctor or a surgeon and she's not allowed to train to be those things. So she works with a boy who is a grave digger to dig out dead bodies that she could practice on. That is the gist of what I know. And then we're getting a sequel. So I wouldn't read the synopsis to the sequel if you haven't read the first one. So I haven't looked at it. But this cover with a dress that looks like a brain is perfection and the first one looks like a heart. I just think whoever designed these covers is incredible. So I'm always on the hunt for the perfect pirate book and maybe The Adventures of Amina Al Sharafi will be that for me. But I also think that The Wicked Bargain by Gabe Cole Novoa has potential and it says here that El Diablo is in the details. In this Latinx pirate fantasy starring a transmasculine non-binary teen with a mission of revenge, redemption, and revolution. So many buzzwords there. I love a good revenge story, especially one set at sea. So I have so much, so many high hopes for this one. And I believe that we're following this character whose father made a deal with the devil that has gone bad. And our main character is trying to protect their father and their ship and everything that happens from there. So I think that this is going to be just a good time. This next book probably has the most beautiful cover of 2023. I, there's just something about it that I love and this is She's a Haunting by Trang Tan Tran and this is compared to Mexican Gothic with the YA version and it is set in a house that has an appetite which is so intriguing and we're following our main character named Jade who is in Vietnam visiting her strange father. She just wants to lie to fit in, spend this time with him, get the money that he promised her for college and then pretend it never happened. So she just tries to be Vietnamese enough, tries to be straight enough, tries to be American enough, just wants to get through it and then she realizes that this house is not quite right there's something really strange going on here her sister and her dad don't believe her i think she meets up with another girl who's going to help her prove that this house is haunted or supernatural something's going on here i've been seeing good things this cover as i said i'm really looking forward to this one okay two more and then i can let you go so we'll start with the crane husband by kelly barnhill this is a retelling of The Crane Wife, which I believe is Japanese folklore. I know nothing about that story, but I did look it up when I saw that it was a retelling and it's fascinating. So I'm curious to see what Kelly Barnhill does with that. This is following a teenage girl who's really the backbone of her Midwestern family. It's just her mother, her brother, and herself. She does all the budgeting for the family. She keeps everybody afloat. Her mother is an artist and she would bring people in and out of their lives. But then one day she brings a six foot tall, crane home that has a menacing air and the girl is powerless to prevent her mom from letting the intruder into her heart and her children's lives. So utterly enchanted and numb to his sharp edges, her mom abandons the world around her to weave the masterpiece the crane demands. So her mom's making some kind of arch for this crane. Sounds like an out there premise, but that is kind of something that I like. I like things that are a little bit different and weird and strange. It sounds like my kind of strange. So I'm very, very curious about this one and I've seen it on a lot of lists. So I know I'm not alone on that one. And then we'll end with a historical fiction. I said before that I love historical fiction. Two of my best books of last year were historical fiction. This one I'm really, really excited about. It's Times Undoing by Cheryl A. Head. And this is a searing and tender novel about a young black journalist's search for answers in an unsolved murder of her great-grandfather in segregated Birmingham, Alabama decades ago. And this is actually inspired by the author's own family history and the murder of her own grandfather. So her looking back 
uh, what happened to him inspired this story and it's the same kind of setup so it's set in Birmingham in 1929 and we follow her grandfather who's Robert Lee Harrington this is a character that she's made up inspired by her grandfather and it's him pursuing job opportunities for his family and everything and then he ends up killed and then we are in the present time following one of his descendants and her researching what happened to him and finding out the answers so I think like the meta of that is kind of interesting. I think this will be really powerful and moving and deeply personal. So I'm really looking forward to that. February is going to be a huge month and that is always exciting for me. I'm actually getting ready to film my February TBR. Don't know how I'm going to fit all of these in. So let me know your thoughts on all of these. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for the support. Bye for now.